Hey everyone, I hope all of you are having an amazing day and welcome back to Isla La Pacifica, where today we have an interesting but also potentially slightly problematic episode on our hands because yes, I am going to build the flamingo habitat today, but the flamingo habitat is also going to be a plantation, which because Isla Pacifica, the way that I've built it so far, is set in the colonial period, does mean that I am today going to build things that directly involve slavery or the subject of slavery so if you're uneasy with that subject today is probably not the best episode for you but i wanted to include that part of history because i wanted to make sure that isla pacifica is as historically accurate as possible and i did not want to like hide or shy away from the subject because i think that would be a disservice to the subject so that's the reason why it is going to involve in today's episode and probably also the next episode. Although in the next episode I will probably not talk about it because I will have talked about it enough in today's episode. But we are somewhat starting off light actually because we are first building the house of the plantation owner. Which if you look at it closely is going to quite a bit resemble the governor's palace because I just think that as a plantation owner he will have the financial means and the motivation to try and emulate the governor but also just the nobility in general to maybe try and get some higher office in like government or some other place which or just get like a high position on the social hierarchy so it is going to look somewhat similar to the governor's palace at least with like some features but most of those features will be like lower grade quality or will just not look as detailed or pristine as the governor's palace. But I now need to put in a little bit of an exclaimer that everything that I say today, don't take it as a fact. Because even though I try to do as much research as possible, I will probably get things wrong. So yeah, just don't take anything I say today as fact. But I had to actually look up how Spanish plantations looked like. Because when I think of a plantation, I usually think of like the ones in the southern United States, which were usually French or British, even though Florida was a Spanish colony for a long time. But then I found out that Spanish plantations usually went under like the umbrella term of haciendas, which could be plantations, could also be related to like mining, so... They could basically be related to most rural industries. But for the sake of today's plantation, I am still going to refer to it as a plantation, not an hacienda, just so that you guys kind of know what I'm talking about without like, oh, what's that word again? But anyway, so today's plantation is going to be a sugarcane plantation. The next one also is going to be one. So yes, Isla Pacifica will have two plantations. Because there's just enough space for that and probably Isla Pacifica would, well, actually has the best climate, I would say. After looking into like the climate that is good for sugarcanes, Isla Pacifica just has the best climate for that. But we are also, or at least I needed to have a place where the sugarcanes could be pressed to extract the resources to actually make sugar from it. Which means that I needed to make a windmill. Or I could also make... A press that could be operated by sadly slaves or by like farm animals but I choose a windmill over that one because let's just say the plantations in Isla Pacifica are on this plateau they are right in front of the governor's palace so he might have some you know power or control over these plantations I mean the owner of the plantation already wants to emulate the governor so he will have a certain degree of control over it but because the plantations are on the, this plateau that is above the town, there will probably not be any obstructions to wind flow. So windmills would make perfect sense, I think, for these plantations or at least for this area. So yeah, I basically just wanted windmills and not make that press because that press, when I looked it up how it looked, looked uh, very uh, annoying to build. So I basically just thought all right i'm not going to build that i'm just going to build a windmill because it's easier and also well let's just say spanish windmills compared to dutch windmills look a lot friendlier dutch windmills look a little bit like 
compared to Spanish windmills like the angry grandfather of windmills. I don't know why I went for grandfather, but they look just a lot less adorable than Spanish windmills. So I just wanted the Spanish windmill, which were actually pretty easy to build because they are basically a cylinder with a pointy roof, extension on the roof, and from there the windmill or the blades of the windmill actually jet out. So it's quite an easy build, actually. I actually made the roof a little bit more difficult because I wanted to make it look like there were like well panes or just let's just say that there were parts of the roof that were either damaged or just not constructed in the best way possible just to make it look really rural and really like well used or just that it was there for a longer period of time but yeah I really just like the windmills and for a long time I actually struggled with trying to find the right size of the blades of the windmill so i think this is like the third variation of the windmill that i built and yeah it's an interesting thing it was let's just say fun to build but most of them well the two other versions weren't girty enough they weren't broad enough for like the shape of like a spanish windmill or at least it looked just not the right size so in the end we have a broader windmill but now we are building a thing that as i said before is directly involving slavery because we are right now building the living quarters of the slaves which let's just say halfway through made me very uncomfortable almost nauseous as well because i basically went into it with like thinking all right how can i make as many just areas for the slaves to sleep and when halfway through i looked at the building i just saw the resemblance to like a storehouse or like a stable and that made me really uncomfortable just to think about it like that i mean i'm very just uncomfortable with the subject of slavery at all i think you could probably hear that because i'm very on edge with this with this commentary today but let's just say i'm disgusted by people who think that they can own other people or see other people as an object to be owned so yeah i let's just say i like the building because it does serve its purpose it does sort of look well like a warehouse or storehouse sadly this warehouse or storehouse houses people so yeah this was part of a plantation the plantation owner would obviously not want you know his slaves to be very close to him even though in this plantation they are sort of close to him but that's mostly because the plateau is quite narrow but i want to have all the buildings related to the plantation quite close to each other even though i did not build the well important building for processing sugar which was like I think like cooking or baking the well extracted sugar resources which from what i know was like the most dangerous part of the sugarcane plantations so yeah i did not build that because there was not enough space so i wanted to make all the buildings apart from each other because even though haciendas could be like big complexes where it was somewhat one building or at least were like multiple buildings but very connected to each other but uh, I did not want that just because I wanted that open area feel. And yeah, I'm already getting uncomfortable just looking at the building again. Because yeah, it's a strange thing to build. Actually in Tionopolis I could have also built, well not something like this, but I actually avoided the subject of slavery altogether. If you guys don't know, Tionopolis was... Well, it was my Greek Planet Coaster Park, but I abandoned it when Planet Zoo came out. But um, yeah, I avoided the subject of slavery there altogether. And looking back at it, it does feel like I'm only telling half of the story or like only the good parts of the story of like the ancient slash Greek times or Hellenistic times, I think you call it. But uh, yeah, now from now on, we are mostly just building the terrain surrounding the plantation or at the plantation and as i said before i wanted to do as minimal of like terraforming as possible but 
I did change up the lake, I did change up the path leading up to the plateau because it looked just very strange, it looked way too steep. But I also made it so that there were like terraces where the sugar canes could be planted. I made the sugar canes also look very like, let's just say disorganized and not like very straight and everything because it was planted by humans It or at least it was not like machine planted. So of course also some plants just grow a lot faster and then other plants that are nearby just grow a lot slower. So I wanted to have that variation and diversity in like height and just not looking straight and like machine planted. But yeah, I'm, I don't know really how I can really, let's just say, move on from the subject of the Basically, the I would say it's the living quarters of the slaves, but it really just rattled me that it really started to look just like a storehouse for just goods, which, yeah, I already said that today's episode could be very problematic, and it definitely is, because I am very rattled right now, I'm very on edge right now, and I mean, I really like how it turned out, it looks very realistic, at least to me. It looks like it is part of Isla Pacifica and it probably should be because even if I did not want to go like complete historical accuracy or didn't want to at least go for that it's actually set in the colonial period. Even if I made like a modern zoo or like a modern version of Isla Pacifica, it would still be there as a building which is I would say better because as I said Isla Pacifica is set in the 1700s and I actually had to look up like oh when did slavery get abolished in well let's just say the entirety of Spain and let's just say you have to wait another 150 or 200 years which made me sad that it took so long but yeah actually this also goes into Qian al-Bashar actually surprisingly because I also found out that slavery was quite a thing in the Ottoman Empire, which Kayan al-Bashar is also in that time period. Although I have since made the decision to not include it in Kayan al-Bashar, because Kayan al-Bashar is basically a fantasy city, so there I can do whatever I want. But Isla Pacifica I wanted to make as historically accurate as possible. So yeah, let's just say... Today's commentary took a long time to make. I think I went through, let's just say, 30 attempts before, well, this one, as you can hear right now, basically came along. And you can still hear that I'm on edge, because this is a very touchy subject, and I was... I try to be as respectful and careful with the subject as possible. But again, if I get things wrong, please do tell me. Also... Yeah, it's just a very touchy subject and it's going to involve the next episode as well because then we're going to make the tapirs habitat but that's also going to be close to the plantation or at least that's going to be on this plateau which is for the plantations. So in the next episode I will not talk about the plantations or that. So the next episode I'm actually going to talk a little bit about the future of the projects so that's going to be the thing for the next episode but not right now we are going to go into the after video tour so we're back for the after video tour of what we've built today so you can see the slave living quarters or the slave barracks you can see the home of the plantation owner and the windmill but then also, of course, the governor's palace just triumphs over everything as it should do. And we are in between the sugarcane fields, but I'm already walking forward so that we can see everything a little bit up close. So, yeah, this building still makes me a little bit uneasy. The slave labor quarter still looks like a warehouse or storage house to me, which it sort of is, but in like the worst way possible. And it will make this area, at least history-wise and storyline-wise, the darkest area on Isla La Pacifica. But besides that, yeah, I really just love this view. Like you can see that, first of all, the plantation owner's home has changed quite drastically, I would say. You guys only saw me build this middle part. Although these two wings that I've added are somewhat identical, it's just that this one has been cut in half. 
And then we of course have the windmill, which is a very simple build, I would say, but it does do its job quite perfectly. And I really just love how it looks sort of, well, very friendly in quite a dark area, I would say. But I just love the view of here. And then of course, like the governor's palace in the back, the plantation owner did not really do a good job at emulating the palace, I would say. It has its own qualities and I really tried to make it look like he tried but didn't really succeed at emulating the governor's palace. But you can see the similarities mostly like the color of the walls and some of the pillars and the arches. But besides that it's not really a good job at emulating the governor's palace. Although I do have to say that this area did change quite a lot. Because the road leading into town or up onto this plateau into the governor's palace has changed completely because first the road was a lot steeper and it wasn't really realistic in my eyes for carriages to use the first version of the road. So that one has changed completely. Also for everyone who wants to find where we are, there's the church. I think I've used that building as a wayfinding tool ever since I built it. But you could also see the first attempt at building the bridge leading into the governor's palace because yeah i didn't get around to do that completely yet so it's the first attempt and every bridge i start basically starts like that two blocks and in between that will be the bridge but then the other area that actually has changed com well not completely but significantly is the lake behind the plantation owner's home because the flamingos, which this habitat is actually for, which I think I only mentioned in the intro of today's video, which let's just say I think is a record that I did not mention the animals at all throughout the commentary of the speed build. But they do actually really like this area or this habitat, even though it is of course way too many plants for them. But anyway, going into the garden of the home of the plantation owner, I think you can already see the difference, the very stark difference in between the very, well, compared to the governor's palace, of course, a little bit less structured, but the still structured gardens of the home of the plantation owner. Also, for some reason, I wanted to have a cross above the door of the plantation owner's home. But yeah, very structured. And then you have just the unkempt terrain or area left aside for workers and, of course, slaves. So yeah, you can really just see the just stark difference. But also, I did let out or just leave all these piles of hay, which are the bedding for the animals, but I just felt that it looked a little bit better with this. So the animals could sleep in here. They actually have a little bit of a bedding in the, well, on underneath this canopy, which they actually do use. They just don't like to use these ones out here, but it just looks like it's just an unkempt area or unkept area. It looks just very rough and all. And well, I really like the area, even though this area is kind of useless, but I mean, not every area has to be useful. Also, I don't see any flamingos. There's supposed to be 12 in here. I have no idea where they are. Well, they should be here, but I also don't see them here, but here's the first of the islands that I changed. Also, if I pan the camera over here, nice clean water over here, and it looks like shit. So, that's fun. Ah, <laughs> oh, there's are they? I, why are you all here? There's nothing here to do. That just looks fake for some reason. But yeah, there's another island that I built over there. Just so that the flamingos actually, you know, keep in the water a little bit or to the water a little bit. And also just going over to that island. Hmm, nice underwater view. But yeah, this looks weirdly fake from far away. But uh, as you can see, you can also just look at the flamingos from the, well, outside of the walkthrough habitat. Because both the peafowl and the flamingos are walkthrough habitat. And... They really look very peaceful here. They really enjoy this place. Also, for some reason, you are there, just on your own. Okay, I'm kind of re relating to him, just being on his own. But, yeah, they don't or aren't able to escape through the waterfall. They aren't able to escape anywhere. 
they actually can't really get on land on that side also again underwater view because camera doesn't like me or i can't control the camera but that's basically it for today's video so we have built the owner of the plantation's home and then we have the windmill the well slave living quarters or the slave barracks which still makes me really think of a storehouse or warehouse also it's kind of uh let's just say in between in between the simplicity of the windmill and the owner of the plantation's home so it's a little bit of like simple less simple uh still well moderately simple extreme <laughs> Could again just see the governor's palace just oh, towering over everything which it should and then you can see the church of course but the next episode will actually go further down this road and somehow will either include the Galapagos tortoise or the top here because that one is going here somehow yeah I have no idea how to do that but it's going to be there and also I've made or basically copied next servant milieu just because i wanted it there so we will end with a nice look on the town of isla la pacifica and i'm going to leave you guys here i hope you enjoyed the video if you do i hope to see you back don't forget to hit the subscribe button also don't forget to hit the like button because it does help out a lot and i wish you all an amazing day bye bye